get curious. Just, it's so important to know what is happening with you right now. Like, oh yeah, when I feel this way, what do I actually feel in my body, right? Developing that emotional literacy. So getting curious, and I really do recommend developing some kind of practice of calm sitting. It's fine to have thoughts. There's, you're not failing. Just doing it is like you're winning. Um, to sit down and really, whether it's first thing when you wake up, to relax the jaw, relax the back of the tongue, and focus on that nice, calm breathing. You don't have to judge it or do anything to it. You're doing just fine as long as you're doing it. And it will evolve over time, but it gives you this baseline of like, oh yeah, I'm so much more than I thought I was. Because remember, the conscious mind is so limited. It can't do much. You are so much more than that. So getting a little bit curious about what that is. Curiosity opens the door to possibility. Love that. I'm gonna write that down. So once you're there, you might decide like, oh yeah, I'm planning for birth. Like, yeah, I do want to find some kind of person who's going to teach me to be really calm and learn to use my mind this way. Or maybe I'm really drawn to this book someone mentioned. And it's really kind of going with those hunches and your intuition about what's right for you. Because how I did it is not going to be at what's right for how you should do it. Um, and it's often times when somebody else said something that you should do that you pick up that book that you really don't finish because, oh, it was kind of okay. You know, and then you feel badly that you never finished that book. Like, don't do that. <laughs> Just really follow those threads that authentically feel like a yes in your body. So knowing what that yes feels like in your body, knowing what that no feels like, and really listening to it. And when you make a mistake and forget, you're like, oh, cool. Yeah, I missed that one up. That's right. That was a no. I do have one question. Mm -hmm. um, listening to you. For people who may not be in the healthiest state and they're attempting things like meditation, hypnosis, it can also be a little challenging for them. Do you have any recommendations on ways, of course, always definitely working with a professional. Yeah, if you're really struggling, yes, please. Mm -hmm. And the, but, you know, if they, how, how, what are ways you can recommend they can things, they do blah, 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 things they can do on their own to help improve their mental health? Health so that they can carry these exercises out on their own. Very good. Yeah. So one is one you're going to really, if you're really struggling, there's a lot of negative self-talk most likely going on. So knowing what you're actually telling yourself throughout the day, um, journaling can help with that, writing it down. So you're really becoming aware then you're going to have to lie. You're going to feel like you're lying to yourself most likely, but you're going to have to replace it with something positive even if you don't believe it yet. So to say like, if, you're, if it's somebody who's like, look, I'm just, I'm fat, stupid, and ugly. And that's what they're telling themselves all day. That is really so sad and heartbreaking. And they would never tell somebody else that. So it's with help, definitely. But finding that way to say, I'm beautiful. I'm changing and growing each day. And it's really finding something that you can feel like, okay, maybe I don't believe it right now, but I'm just going to start moving forward. I'm just going to try it on. If you try it on and, and you give it a good three months and it's not working for you, change it, learn and grow, but you've got to just start somewhere. The other practice that I really love comes from, which is about what I described. It comes from Melissa Tears, T-I-E-R-S, and it's her New York, her New Yorker one minute self-hypnosis. And so sitting just meditation can be really hard for people. Like you said, maybe a lot of the negative thoughts come up, things that they really just, it's not going to serve them to spend time with. The one minute self-hypnosis goes like this. You count down from 10 to one and you need to do it because it keeps your conscious mind busy. So you don't forget what you were doing. So you go 10, close your eyes, imagine 10 fades from view. I'm not hyper visual guys. I pretend 10 is fading from view in whatever way that means to me. And that is just fine. I'm not going to judge my experience. I'm just having an experience. So 10, 10 fades from view. Open your eyes. Say nine. Close your eyes. Nine fades from view. Open your eyes. Eight. Say eight. And close your eyes. And imagine eight fading from view all the way till you get to one. And when you get to one, there's a couple of options. The one Melissa Tears teaches, and she's a hypnotherapist in New York and former punk rocker. It's a pretty cool lady. She teaches you to do that, put a movie on the screen. How do you want this to go? 
For some, that can be a lot. So maybe you just wanna see that other you and you just wanna give her a big hug. You just wanna start with something very small, like some kindness to that other you that has that problem. That other you is feeling really sad and she's not feeling great about herself. So what is that problem with her, this, this awful feeling that I'm working through? So take that problem out, put it to the side, you know, see what that problem looks like. Is it you know, round, square, what shape does that, what color does it have? You can kind of like really see that problem, take it out, put it to the side and give her what she needs. Most of the time that problem disappears. If not, place that, this, this method, this thing right here comes from John Overdurf, who is amazing and taught Melissa Tears, by the way. Changing that problem will often disappear in this act, but if it doesn't, go place it somewhere in nature that if you, or in a house, that if you walk by would just be hilarious to you. Just so perfect. Just like adding a sense of humor in. So once you've done that, you give yourself all you need, that other you that had that problem until you're looking amazing. Like, wow, she's working out every day. She really values herself enough to work out every day. She feels really good about herself. And just really giving the you everything that you need. And then stepping into that and breathing it in. Just little bit by little bit, allowing how the changes will take place over time. And when you've integrated all that you need, your eyes will naturally flutter open. Mm -hmm. Another way I use this, this is just a third technique. I don't know where this one comes from, but the 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, a great way to do a trance without having to feel like you're sitting there and trying to focus on something else. Sometimes if I'm having a problem with something, I'll ask my unconscious mind what I need to know about it. So I'll just suggest like, hey mind, I don't know why I'm feeling so upset about this. Or I just can't shake this feeling in my gut. I'm not sure. What do I need to know about this? When I'm ready to begin, I'll close my eyes. And then I'll give myself that thing too. When I'm done, whether I'm consciously aware of the answer or not, my eyes will naturally open and I'll call it done for the day. Maybe I'll know what the answer is right then and there. Maybe it'll come to me some other time or maybe I'll just have a change of feeling. I don't know. So <clears throat> you can use these tools in ways that are like that. But there's one last thing I know we really need to wrap up. If someone's really having some incredibly deep emotional states that are really stuck and this whole idea of sitting sounds awful and not doable, look up EFT, the Emotional yeah. Freedom Technique. Watch a YouTube video on faster EFT because quite frankly, if the faster version works for you, why do the long one? We all have limited time. Just do the quick one. If the quick one doesn't work for you, explore some of the longer options. If regular EFT, there's even something called TFT, thought field therapy, which is very algorithmic and specific to each like emotional state within someone. Find a practitioner if you need help starting with this. But what it can do is help move that energy up and out. And it's the only time I let myself vent. If I need to vent and I'm pissed or I'm really upset about something, if you vent while doing the tapping, like even though I have this anger, I love and accept, obviously that's something I work on, right? Uh, deeply and completely. I love, right? And then I go through it, this anger. Oh, it just makes me so upset when this thing happens. Oh, I wish they just wouldn't. Because when you vent while doing EFT, you're actually moving the energy up and out instead of digging the neural pathways deeper. When you vent any other time, you're making it worse for yourself. You're like myelinating those little neurons, making them more permanent. Don't do that. Don't vent. Vent while you're tapping. That way you move it up and out. You know you're done. You keep doing all the rounds. You know you're done when your perspective is totally shifted and you don't feel that thing inside you to the extent that it was. So a lot of times I'll encourage people to keep tapping until they get to a place of like, you know what? I think I just woke up on the wrong side of the bed. Yeah, that's right. I had that dream and then huh it had nothing to do with the other people at all oh my god oh my god <laughs> <laughs> you know and you come to the sort of place that it it wasn't what you thought at all and in fact you can really learn from it and you give yourself a little compassion maybe compassion with other people and the thing is shifted so you just kind of keep going so do that too i love that thanks for those Kate, do you have anything else you would like to ask Erin? No, I think that's it for now. And we talked a little bit before. <laughs> You're like lots out there. Erin, <laughs> well, this has been awesome. Thank you again. Can you please tell everybody where we can find you online and connect with you? Sure. So my website is birth evolved.com if I could have told birth if I could have had like birth evolving and that would have said I would have gone with birth evolving but birth evolved sound like 
a better name to me. So worthyevolved.com. I am on Instagram, have to admit, especially now I'm not very active. Um, I have a priority to my current clients and my family um, and myself. And when that time is filled up, sometimes I don't get to the other stuff. You're welcome to find me on Instagram. I do do free phone consultations still. And I have some great deals on birth classes while we're in shelter in place that will be a little um, higher rate in thus uh, after summer is over. So I recommend if you're thinking about something like this, check it out now. I love it. Thank you again. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> It was really great talking with you. I feel so honored to be here with such amazing people. So thank you. <laughs>